a lot of people come out here and just really enjoy like the peace and quiet because there's not much that goes on out here. Over the winter, we've been to a couple of dog sled races here in the UP. But have you ever wanted to learn how to drive your own team of dogs? Nature's Kennel in the McMillan Newberry area offers just that. We run tours seven days a week, December through April, and we have guests seven days a week. We do three types of trips. We do a 10 mile trip that runs every day from nine to noon or one to four. And people can learn to drive their own dog team or just ride with a guide. Kids have to be 10 years old to drive their team on that trip. Uh, kids of any age can ride, any ability can ride. Um, we've had people in wheelchairs. It's something that different that they can do, get put in the sled. I've had a couple gentlemen who've been blind drive a team. So it's really something that anybody can get at least get in for a ride in the winter. And then we do a 20 mile trip, which runs from nine to three. Of course we do 20 miles. And then that trip includes a pasty lunch because if they're in the UP, they have to have a pasty. And then we do an one night overnight. So we do a 20 mile trip to our remote winter camp, which is a yurt and a cabin and of course a sauna. And uh, that's all guided. So we cook meals out there at camp. Uh, we cook breakfast on the second day and then we do 20 miles and finish up back here at the kennel on day two. Tasha and Ed Steelstra built Nature's Kennel about 15 years ago, and it has grown quite a bit over the years. There's eight yards now. The first couple of years there was two, and then each year we've added. This year we added a kennel eight. A couple of years ago we added a kennel seven, so we've expanded even just the dog yard and dog numbers. There are 240 Alaskan Huskies to feed, run, snuggle, and shelter. They're barrels, they're actually the perfect size for them so that they can crawl inside and curl up into a ball. And uh, the barrel is small enough so that it traps all the heat in there, but big enough so they can still curl up. And uh, we load it up with straw so they got a new nice soft bed in there. And these dogs are able to sleep out into negative 50 degree weather all the time. And that's what they'll do on the big races like the Iditarod or the Bear Grease or the Yukon Quest. When you visit, you'll most likely have the chance to mush some dogs who have run the Iditarod. Oh yeah, who's a good girl, Percy? She's ran the Iditarod twice in the Yukon Quest. Same with Prince Charming and UT down there, Cyrus. Alan Bully have run it, Stu's run it, Koa's run it, a whole bunch of dogs. Oh, probably two or three years was Ed's last race. Um, but yeah, he's run Iditarod eight times. I've raced all through the Midwest and in Europe. And then this, the tourism business got large enough that we just couldn't be gone for months at a time. You know, it's, it's hard, the racing season and the tourism season at the same time. Good boys! This winter's been great. I mean, a ton of snow and warm temperatures for guests. It's been, it's been a golden season for us. Usually for a tour, we crank out maybe like eight to eight to 10 miles an hour. This is the Queen Mary. We're gonna be taking a ride in it. And I'm just gonna get it all set up with the gang lines and stuff. And usually if you're given a ride, you'll go somewhere between seven to 10 dogs, depending on how much weight you have in the sled and the trail conditions. But these gang lines are made out of uh, what we call Canada cable. And that's just because they come out of Canada. They're really easy to make. They all kind of separate into sections just like that. And you can just take them apart and reattach them. Two, four, six, eight. Perfect. Over here, we have a couple things that we use to control the speed. I got this guy right here. This is called your drag pad. And it's just made out of old snowmobile track. It's got some spikes on the bottom to get some traction in there. And uh, all it does is just regulate the speed. So I'll put some pressure on that if I see the gang line getting a little bit loose or I want to slow down. And uh, when I want to come to a complete stop, I'm going to use this guy. This is called your bar brake. And how you use it is it just gets dug straight into the snow. You want to get it in as far as you can. The farther in it is, the easier it is to stop. Uh, I like to give a verbal command as well as the physical command. And that command is just put my foot in and I go, whoa! Just a long steady one. If you say like, whoa, 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 
Dogs are going to get all excited and they're going to hear, go, 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 go. Let's keep running. And you're probably not going to be stopping that fast. This is called your snow hook. Um, it's going to be sitting there the entire time unless we come to a stop and I need to use it. How I'm going to use it, I'm going to grab the handle just like so, toss it in the snow, stomp it in a bunch of times. You want to start hooking up some dogs? Watch me hook up dogs. So when you hook up dogs, you always want to start off with the uh, lead dogs first so they hold the gang line nice and tight. Uh, and then you can work your way on back. Come on, Woodstock. Good boy, Woodstock. All right, come on, buddy. Yeah, good boy, Woodstock. Come on, let's stand out, buddy. Let's stand out. Good boy. Uh, but this is a harness. It's gonna sit on the dog just like that. Uh, they got the webbing that goes on their back and then two arm holes right there. And this is the neck loop. So when I put it on, I always fold the neck loop up over the two arm holes just like so. And then you can just slide it on over their head. And this straight part is gonna go over their chest. So you're gonna give it a quick spin around. And then you can get one arm through one of the loops and the other arm through the other loop. A lot of times they'll do it for you. And you can unclip them from the chain, get a good grip on them. And you always want to pop this collar out from underneath the harness so it doesn't rub up on their neck. And then you can walk on over. Um, a lot of dogs are super easy to just walk on over, but some dogs are stronger than others. So you do what we call two wheeling. And all that is just picking them up like that and they walk on over. What's up? Come on, buddy. Let's stand out. Good job, guys. So next up, we got Hammer and Breslin. There we go. All the dogs were quiet until the harnesses came out and everyone in the kennel got excited. They all kind of light up and uh, they get really excited when they all start running. I think they're all kind of just trying to hype each other up or when they're in like gym class back in the day, how everyone was kind of like, pick me, pick me. Uh, then we got the swing dogs. These I like to put some strong dogs that keep the pace pretty well because uh, they're going to be controlling generally how fast we're going more or less. The uh, prime time for a dog to be running is between four and five years old. That's when their muscles are fully developed and they're ready to run. They usually have the good enough training by that time too to really get down and get dirty. Uh, but some dogs like Hammer, he's only a year old. Breslin, he's two. And then Woodstock and Aruba are both eight years old. So they're nice and experienced and they're good to go. The wheel dogs are usually gonna be the strongest dogs. So I like to put the biggest, baddest, meanest dogs right this way, because they're directly connected to the sled. So they're gonna be pulling most of the weight. And away we go. Let's see. Ah! Commands for a left turn, uh, you're gonna say ha. Huh. And for a right turn, you're gonna say G. Uh, to continue on going straight, you say ambai, and then to go is let's go, stop as well. So there's really only five commands you gotta know. So the goal when you're running dogs is to uh, try and keep them at as steady of a trot as possible. Similar to like running a marathon, you know, if you're gonna sprint the first mile, you're gonna be done the first mile. Uh, but it's kind of difficult with dogs like Cheese and Kamek here because they just want, they have so much pent up energy that they just want to run and run and run. They love to run. It's their favorite thing in the world. Gee! Ah! Oh. When you unharness the dogs, you always want to start with the back two and then work your way up uh, onto the leaders. Doesn't matter which one you do first. And uh, these guys are strong, so. Then you walk them back over to their house. Good boy, Kamek. You always want to give them some praise and some love and just making sure that they know they did a good job. Good boy. There you are. Good job, buddy. 
good job, buddy. I take care of, I think it's 21 tour dogs. And that starts with Charming and Percy here. And then all the way down to the end of the yard. And then I have eight more. And they all got their own little personality, their own little quirks. It's our job to figure out what they are and how they run best. Toss it up, flap. Flap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we used to operate with just two or three guides and now we have six to eight. Since you guys are riding, um, all you have to do is keep your arms and hands in the uh, sled at all times. Kind of Disneyland rules, more or less. They come right. from all over the country, um, and it's a challenge. You know, you get people who just want an adventure, which it is, but it's also a lot of work. Generally, we wake up at about 5.30 in the morning, and then we come out here, and we feed all of them, because they need about two to four hours um, so they can fully digest their food before they can start running, because otherwise they might get uh, what's called bloat. It's just uh, their stomach twists up and it's not good. And we want to make sure that these dogs are staying healthy. So, you know, it's all about them. It's not about us. And it's a long season. They come usually mid-September, 1st of October, to learn everything there is about dogs, the trails, how to run a team, how to do some behavior training with dogs, how to hook up the teams. Don't get lost out there. Get the dogs in shape so that by December, they're ready to lead guests. Good. I've only gotten lost like Maybe seven times. That's no, no I've never been lost. I've never been lost. Don't worry. Yeah, we probably see around 2,500 people a year. They really do come all over the world. So, you know, credited that some to um, ecotourism has grown in the last five years. Social media has grown. Older people are taking a little more challenging adventures as well, doing something different. The bucket list type life, you know, that seems to be pretty popular. I turned 70 in January and I've got things planned out for almost the entire year to do something different every month. And dog sledding was one of the things I've always wanted to do. I love dogs for one and um, I'm always interested in, you know, the Iditarod and I just always thought it would be a fun thing to um, try. And um, so here I am. Of those 240 of man's best friend at Nature's Kennel, some are just learning to be sled dogs. All of them are under one year old. And it's gonna be their first day of harness breaking today. And there is a playground of puppies. We retire all of our dogs in the family homes when they're like six, seven, eight years old. Those are the good dogs to have. They're just good dogs. Puppies are just trouble. I let them burn some energy out before I make them into a house dog. <laughs> So if you love dogs and you love snow just as much as these fur balls do, I recommend a dog sled tour. And we keep trails, you know, that's kind of a unique thing about us. We groom our own trail system, have a great relationship with the DNR. And so our trails really do stay good through mid-April, if not sometimes first of May. Might be like that again this year. <laughs> it's not going anywhere soon, I don't think.